Right. You shall not surely die. That was his first doctrine, his first line. Uh, and this whole weekend, we've been talking about the delusions of the devil. One of them has to do with death, that you don't die. Another one has to do with spiritualism, that you can talk to the dead. And another one has to do with hell, that people burn forever and ever and ever. And if you really want to know the truth, which I believe you do, that the doctrine that people burn forever is really based upon the doctrine that you don't die. In order for people not to, uh, to, I mean, in order for them to burn forever, they have to live forever. And this idea that you don't die, that you go on forever, you have to spend eternity somewhere, where does that idea originate from? It originated from the serpent. Right. It's the serpent's idea that you don't die. It's the serpent's idea that you can talk to the dead. It's the serpent's idea that you go on forever, and thus you must burn forever. Uh, now, I know a lot of good people teach this. I know a lot of uh, wonderful spiritual people teach these things. And some people say to me, well, Brother Steve, if what you're saying is right, if this is all really from the devil, then uh, how can all these good people be wrong? How can my preacher be wrong? And my response is, well, uh, Eve was a good person, wasn't she? She was a perfect person, and yet she was wrong. She was a perfect person. She was wrong. She followed Satan. And I'm not saying people are lost because they're mixed up on death or spiritualism or hell. Uh, I think that it's easier to be lost if you're led astray by doctrines that aren't true. It's always easier on the path to heaven if we're following truth. But the ultimate decision is up to God and I, I know there's a lot of wonderful people out there that uh, are mixed up on this, and may God help them to know the truth. May God help us all to know his word and to know the truth. All right, now, I've been talking to your head, and now it's time for me to talk to your heart. Here's a couple of pictures here I'm going to show you on the screen. Oh, yeah, look at that. There's little baby Seth, our little baby boy. Oh, uh, that was just a couple months ago. He's a little bit older now, and there he is next to Kristen uh, with a little spoon next to a ball. I mean, doesn't it just tug on any dad's heart? Here's another picture of him just coming out of the bathtub. <laughs> he loves to take baths, and there's my lovely wife, Kristen, there with little baby Seth. Um, why do I show you this picture, these pictures? Uh, Kristen and I love Seth more than words can describe. We love him so much. As you love your kids, those of you that have kids, you love your kids. Now, let's say, God forbid, God, I pray this all the time, you know, be with little Seth, change, give him the Holy Spirit so when he grows up, he'll love you and want to follow you. But let's say, horror of horrors, that when he gets a little bit older, a little bit older, a little bit older, he gets old enough to, uh, to, to know, old enough to make decisions, and he makes a choice to turn away from Jesus, because we all have free choice, right? We all have free choice. And if he makes a choice that he doesn't want to follow Jesus, and then when he's 14 or 15, he gets hit by a car and he dies. You know, I'm using this as an illustration, just like John Smith over there. It's just an illustration. <laughs> if that were to happen, and he was old enough to know and he turned away from Jesus and he didn't want God and then he died, you know, what would happen to him? What would God, what would God do with a little kid who lived 13 or 14 years in his life, made a wrong decision, and then died. Is God going to take that little kid, that person, and is he going to burn him in hell forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever so it never stops? You think about that. Do you know that people have lost their minds over that doctrine? Do you know that people are, are in insane asylums over that doctrine? Some people say, but God is just. God is just. Well, I believe that. I believe he's just. So is that just? Is it just to take a person who's lived a short time in this life and then, and then burn him forever? I don't think so. What about my mother? My mother's not a believer in Jesus. What's God going to do with her? My Jewish mother. Is he going to burn her forever? I pray for my mom and I hope that she'll come to believe in Christ before she does. But God's not going to burn her forever in hell. That doctrine is an abomination. It's a lie. It's from Satan. It's not according to this book. Let me show you what this book says. John 3.16. No symbolism. Jesus said, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not what? 
should not perish, right, perish, but have eternal life. That's what this book says. God loves people. He loves everybody. And if we're lost, there's nothing, nothing else he can do. But we'll perish. Here's another text in the Bible. Romans 6.23 says the wages of sin is what? Is death. Right. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The only ones that have eternal life are those that receive Jesus Christ. Eternal life comes from Christ. If we don't have Christ, we do not have eternal life and we will not live forever. The wages of sin is death. How many of you believe that on the cross, Jesus Christ took every sin that everybody ever committed from the beginning to the end of time? He took them all. Do you believe that? Do you believe that he suffered the full punishment for sin? The full punishment? Now think about this. If the wages of sin is eternal torment, then the only way that Jesus Christ can, can fully bear the penalty of sin to pay the full price would be to be tormented forever. If he's not tormented forever, he didn't pay the full price. If being tormented forever is the full price. But it's not. It's not. What happened to Jesus? The wages of sin is what? It's death. The wages of sin is death. And the death that Jesus Christ died is the final death that people will die at the end of the thousand years if they reject him. If they reject the gift of God, which is eternal life, this is what will happen to them. Back to Revelation 20, and let's wind this up. Verse 14, Revelation 20, 14 says, Death and hell would be cast into the lake of fire. And then it says, this is what? This is the second death. Right, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life, he was cast into the lake of fire. The ultimate end of the lost it's not eternal torment. According to the Bible, it's the second death. And this is a death that has no hope of a resurrection. The reason why Jesus rose is because he was sinless. And he's God's son. He was sinless. That's why God could raise him, even though he died that death. But those that aren't sinless and those that don't have Christ, when they die that death, that's it. They die the second death and it is all over and God is going to weep he's going to cry when he looks at the whole world even Lucifer who was his most brilliant son but who has gone bad God is going to weep and cry when they end up in the lake of fire and they're gone Satan his angels the lost the planet is going to be purified and, and burned and cleansed the whole planet is going to be cleansed and it's going to they're going to end up as ashes and that's it. That's what the Bible says. Now, before we finish, I want to just look at a little bit more. Look at the next verse. Chapter 21, verse 1. It says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no more sea. Now, right after the lake of fire, after God cleanses the planet, and all the lost are burned up, and they become ashes, and that's all that's, all that's left of them, then God is going to purify planet earth. The scene changes. And then there's a new heaven and a new earth. You see that? And it says the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Now where, was, uh, where were the people that were lost? They were on the earth. Where did the fire come? Down upon them, on the earth. And if they're all around the earth, the fire comes down. The whole planet becomes one big lake of fire. Just like Peter said, just like Malachi said, just like Jesus said, one big lake of fire. And then when it's all over, what happens? The fire goes out. And the earth, the first earth and the first heaven are passed away. And that means the lake of fire passes away too. The lake of fire is found in Revelation 20 verse 15. And then the next verse says it's all passed away. All passed away. Now go down to chapter 21 verse 4. I love this verse. Verse 4 says that God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death. No more death. Neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things have all passed away. Now think about this. If you have any questions left in your mind, if hell burned forever, there would always be uh, sorrow. There would always be crying somewhere. There would always be pain somewhere, right? But this verse says it's not going to be. This verse says there's not going to be any more sorrow. There's not going to be any more pain. There's not going to be any more suffering. It's all going to be gone forever.